Hello everyone, and welcome to another Bass Singer Reaction, and Happy New Year! We are now, finally into 2022, hoping for less COVID and more life, and more fun. And we're going to get that started today, with the first reaction of the year. Uh, a few things before we get started, just want to let you guys know what's kind of coming down the pipe in this new year. So, today we're looking at Nightwish, uh, Ghost Love Score. It's um, been recommended to me by a lot of people. I'm very excited to hear it. I've never heard it. It's 10 minutes. It's going to be epic. So we're going to do that today. We're going to be doing more rock. I'm going to be doing more rock and metal covers. We're going to be doing more Dimash. We're still going to keep covering and doing videos for acapella stuff as well as videos come out, depending on what you guys want to see and, you know, what I, what I want to do videos for and break down. Uh, I have some new covers on the way. One is my cover of Other Side by Avi Kaplan, which I'm very excited about. This was um, recorded by me, audio edited by Marwan Amon, and Marwan is also going to be doing the video for it. So that's very exciting. I'm also doing a cover of Enemy, which is the theme song for Arcane. And the, sh the short of it is that I'm combining both a lot of elements of acapella and of dubstep because I actually used to be a pretty intense electronic music producer and it's really a cool project and it's probably the most challenge I've ever had mixing things blending all the elements together so one doesn't overpower the next it's crazy uh, so that's coming out and I also have a Game of Thrones theme song cover coming out as well um, I've been in touch with a, an amazing artist and collaborator who might be joining for that or who might do an extra version of that. I'm going to get in, get back in touch with him um, as these things have developed recently. So that's very exciting. A lot of you have been asking, um, or a lot of you have been reaching out to me and uh, seem interested in what I do outside of just the reaction videos. If you want to follow me day to day, check out my Instagram at Peter M. Barber. Links in the description. I'm pretty active on there and I'm also good about responding to messages on there. Um, so if you want to reach out on there and see what I do day to day, that's the best place to do it. Um, quick merch plug, because I haven't done this in forever. This is my official logo I had designed uh, about six months ago. You can get sweatshirts, sweatpants, coffee mugs. Um, you can get a hat like this, which is the most popular item. A bunch of other things. It's in my Etsy store, also link in the description. Um, so if you want to rep, rep the brand, rep some merchandise, that'd be fantastic. Um, and that is all the things on my list. I wrote stuff down so I wouldn't forget to mention anything. Without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and dive into Nightwish Ghost Love Score, which dropped about eight years ago, I think. Um, but people are still absolutely crazy about it. So let's go ahead and dive in and break this down. Um, I'm really excited to, to see what's going on here. I don't know anything about this. Don't know really the, the genre that I think it's metal or rock or some combination thereof. And uh, that's it. So here we go. Let's do it. Epic was an understatement. Look at this. Look at this. We got this this organ, this crazy looking organ here. Almost looks like a like coral somewhere, or like bones, like a like a, a throne of bones or something. First of all, metal drumming, like hard hard rock metal drumming, is one of my favorite things in all of music. Like a good metal drummer is just the most epic thing ever. Just like smashing away in perfect time absolutely incredible um we've got we've got big production going on we've got big, we got flamethrowers everywhere we got the long hair i love the, the long hair for a rock groups so cool it's like the, it's like bringing it back to like hair metal back in the day back, uh, like the 80s um big light production and of course we have this huge like powerful choir like chanting in the background um, so already a lot of, and these are all kind of the things that when you combine them, just create that like epic 
wall of sound. You'd hear this kind of thing featured in like a battle in a big cinematic uh, movie, something like that. That's cool. And not only that, but I, I'm pretty sure we, we already hit one key change or some kind of change in tonality. So let's just go back a few seconds. It is 10 minutes long, so I'm going to, I won't take as much time as I normally do on like a three minute video. Um, so we're, we're gonna try and move through this a bit, but um, we're off to a good start. Yes, that is a key change. Getting my piano out. I was looking away for a minute to get my piano app pulled up. There we go. That was insane, guys. Okay, so super cool intro. They do change back and forth between tonalities. Um, it's interesting. There's they're doing this thing in a few parts where they actually carry the rhythm over, and it gives it for just a split second this kind of syncopated feel, almost like it's wrong, but it's so right, you know. And then they just finally kind of landed in what I can only assume is going to be. The kind of core of this piece. Now they've they've they did this whole epic intro, and now it sounds like they've just settled into a groove. So let's go back and hear that transition out of this big, like minute and fifteen second intro, just like a straight up epic intro, and see how they get into the body of this piece. Cool, cool. Okay, first of all, I love that she is using a steady vibrato at times. It just, it just shows that she knows. And I, I don't know the singer's name. I, like I said, I haven't done any research. I wanted it to be totally fresh, so I'll look into that later. But she, it, it, it means you have basically you can sing with good, healthy technique. If you have a consistent vibrato, it means there's not excess tension here. It means there's consistent breath support coming. And, there, and you can tell the difference between a forced vibrato and a natural vibrato like she has adopted in this song. It's cool, we already get some contrast between a more breathy sound, a more airy, kind of angelic sound that she's using in her upper range to a little bit more belt-like um, already in that first verse. Now it's 10 minutes long, so I can't go back and re-highlight everything, but I'll just I'll tell you guys to go back and check it out. Just compare her high notes and the start of that verse towards right there at the end she starts getting a little more vocal fold closure which creates a little more brightness in the sound a little more purity of tone and it allows you what you get with good vocal fold closure is you're able to stretch your vocal folds farther to sing higher that's what happens when you sing higher vocal folds actually stretch and vibrate faster so you can already tell she's getting into that a little bit of that belt land there at the end of that verse very cool very nice opening showcase for this voice So she belts my, 
and then switches to head voice for fall. So you get a more power. Now, of course, this sound, because it's coming through a mic and it's amplified and it's compressed on the way out, everything kind of sounds the same volume. That would not sound the same volume if she was doing it without a mic. That first when she goes, my, would be much more pure and big and loud. And when she pulls back out of her chest voice and actually flips into head voice on the same pitch for fall, it would be much quieter and softer. More air is escaping. It, it turns from that kind of belt sound to that kind of airy sound. That's very interesting. It's very rare that someone flips on the exact same pitch. My fall, and then for fall she flips. Very interesting. So I guess maybe we started in the five because now we're now we're in B flat minor. Mm, I guess that was a the three. Was that a was that a? I want to figure out what her little vocal line was here. How high she went. Mm, F sharp, F sharp in, or G or G flat, whatever you want to call it. That's the enharmonic. Cool. So she's all the, she's all the way getting getting way up in the. Uh, fifth, fifth octave here, up into the fifth octave. It's an F, F five. Siren from the deep came to me and sang my name. Was a really nice kind of fully exposed section for this for this vocalist here and again we get we get her intentionally making a, a brighter more powerful belt like sound and intentionally pulling back to get the more breathy airy sound all the while you can tell she's got this nice breath support because whenever she turns on the vibrato it's very steady just like it's freely it's all just freely vibrating when she lets it go um, so that's really nice. So you, it's a, she's a very skilled vocalist, and I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see where it goes. We're four minutes in. Four minutes in, you can tell. You can tell she's the kind of singer that can probably do some crazy shit, especially up in her high notes, up in that with those bell notes. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we get there. But it's already really excellent. I'm a big, big fan so far. So I have a friend named George who's a, an exceptional guitarist. He's a professional guitar player in Nashville. And it is so tempting for me to just make a completely haywire attempt at analyzing this guitar part because I really have no idea what I'm talking about. And just, to, just, just so he can give me shit for it. <laughs> I'm not going to. 
I'm not going to because I, I try to only talk about things I have a, at least a decent idea about. I don't know. I don't know much about guitar technique or, you know, what's good or what's not. Aside from, like, artistic choices, like what, what a guitarist might do with a phrase. Um, but it's way outside my expertise, so I'm going to leave it. But, George, if you're watching, uh, guitar player reacts. <laughs> Looks like we got a big, big down section here. And you know, maybe this is just what they do live. Often bands will extend a song out if they do it live. They'll just kind of do an, not, not an improv section, but they will intentionally add sections to make it longer in live performance. It's just pretty common practice. So, like I said, I haven't heard this song, so I'm not sure if that's what this is here, but. Um, what we have here is a, a very much down section compared to the rest. I feel like I'm narrating some epic story right now because I'm just talking and there's this like, there's this like very atmospheric music. There's like some high voice going on. Oh, I see the drummers coming back up now. Okay. All right, we're about to, it's about to get crazy. We got the lighters out now. It's like I'm reading an audio book. I'm just gonna keep talking during this down section. Okay, we got some, some claps going on. <laughs> Throwing up the rocker, baby. Come on, let's get it. Woo! Wow, not predictable. is sick i love her she's fantastic she's a badass and she's got a badass outfit on the whole band is cool oh this is fantastic i'm excited i'm moving into this music because i love metal and hard rock i love 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 it and uh elizabeth on the charismatic voice it looks like that's also a staple of her so that's um much love much love there to to elizabeth she's fantastic and op uh, opera singer a uh, fellow opera singer Cool. So there's so much good stuff that you can, she is amping up the voice. It's she didn't really do anything in that higher airy part of her inner head voice there. That was all powerful chest voice singing, and you could tell it's just going to be more of that as this song ramps back up. I think it's so smart that they have that huge down section where I was narrating the where I was just <laughs> freeform narrating the scene. Oh, was, that was a very meta experience. Um, because now they, they can kind of restart from zero and build back up as opposed to just having like 10 minutes of epicness, which would get pretty exhausting. You got to have contrast. You, you really do have to have, have to have contrast in this kind of music to, to give the peaks value and importance. You have to have the valleys there. So very smart. Huge valley, about a two minute valley there right in the middle. And then we go into this crazy like long bridge section where she's letting it go everyone's letting it go there's all these like big strikes happening where like guitar drum organ keyboard everything's hitting all at once it's called an orchestra strike if it's an orchestra if they all if they all um articulate at once like quickly it's called an orchestra strike so we're doing that we're doing like a full band strike on all these punches and again adding to the intensity of this piece let's keep rocking Yes, 
flamethrowers. Yes. Oh my god. So there, not only so we had the, we had those strikes again, except with the strikes we had her, her also singing, and we had the choir also singing in the background, and we had flamethrowers shooting. Bah, 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 bah. So we had all these things happening, each just like attacking all at once. Super, super cool. There we go. Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Big belt, big open mouth. Get that, get all that, get all that brightness in the sound, get that forward presence. Great vocal fold closure, so the sound's very pure. That would have that would have a lot of volume even without mic, I promise you. So that's epic. That's what I've been waiting for. Again though, does the back up ten seconds. She does the my and then switches for fall into her head voice. Actually, that might have all been. Oh, we are back in. Okay, so they were bouncing between the one and the four earlier, I think. We were in F minor, then B flat minor at some point. Now we're back to F minor. A flat. No, you know what? This actually, the first time it was very clearly chest voice and then head voice. This, it sounds all like chest voice, but not. Not a super focused, belty chest voice. It's like a more floaty chest voice. Um, but that's what it sounds like, because those two, my fall, that, those sounded all kind of the same timbre. It didn't sound like she was switching registers. Something she did, um, which really helps in that range. You up on it up to a C five there, a tenor high C. She went yeah. So she actually opened up the vowel from it's the word is you, but on that C five she ended up really on like an ah yeah because it helps on that up around that range to have a much kind of bite the apple mouth shape. It literally based on physics and how the sound waves propagate throughout your vocal tract, that area of the voice really heeds itself to open vowels. So when you see a tenor sing a high C, they're often like really big mouthing it. Um, whereas a little bit lower, it's a, it's a different vowel position. So you can, it, this is called vowel tuning, vowel modification, formant tuning in the opera world is what we call it. Where you intentionally change your vowel shape to match literally the physics of how the sound waves propagate throughout your vocal tract depending on the vowels. They're called formants. So formant tuning is lining up what you're singing with what's already being produced just based on the shape of your vocal tract. This is what she's doing here. Who knows if she knows about formant tuning? Doesn't really matter. Um, it's, 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 she's doing what feels natural to her and kind of, and which does fit perfectly in line whether, whether or not she's got it planned out or if she's just like, I'm gonna let it rip 
and an open valve feels better up here. Either way, it sounds awesome. Oh my goodness gracious. That was a ch a chest belt F5. That's ridiculously high. A flat five in some kind of. I generally don't know if it's possible to to use full chest voice that high, but whatever she did was either like chest, if it is possible, or like a very powerful, reinforced, pure vocal fold closed head voice or some kind of mix. Also, I like these Longhorns. Is that their is that their symbol? Is that like their logo? I don't know. Um, but I saw it in flames earlier. It didn't say anything. It looks like it's at the top of the stage too. Anyway, that is some world-class, world-class belting coming out. That was epic. He knows. He's like, yeah, what's up? Incredible. Absolutely phenomenal. That was so good. This is now going on my gym playlist, 100%, and I will check out more stuff by this band. Guys, thank you for this recommendation. And I have about 170 more metal and hard rock recommendations waiting for me on that post I did about a month ago, six weeks ago. That was super, super cool, super fun. Um, so many awesome things happening vocally. Tons of awesome things happening instrumentally. I wish I had more knowledge about guitar, for example, to comment more eloquently, more educated about it. But I, I do try to stay in my lane as far as what I know. And what I know is the voice. I know the voice very well and just general, you know, artistic choices, layouts, chords, that kind of stuff. But I'm, I'm, I'm not going to wax eloquent upon the electric guitar um, or other instruments that I'm not as familiar with. Um, so that's that. Guys, that was fantastic. So um, all those announcements in the beginning. Um, oh, and I forgot to say, please like and subscribe. And if you really like what I'm doing, please consider donating to my Patreon, which now has over 100 patrons. As of just yesterday, which is fantastic and a huge achievement of mine. A huge, uh, it was a huge goal for me when I started the Patreon. So, thank you, all my patrons. I love you to my Patreon family. They know I love them. I talk to them all the time. Um, <laughs> you could be that. Could be you. That could be you. Talking to you. Talking to you. So, guys, with that said, welcome to the new year. Welcome to 2022. Going to be very exciting. Um, yeah, I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.